How many of you guys see things heating up in Syria? I mean, do you see that on the news? Yeah? yeah. The father said he would bring Damascus, uh, destruction from the north. It's replete throughout the scriptures in numerous locations. And so we look to the place that has the most destruction in the world right now, it's Syria. Again, this is not difficult. How many of you believe that the Messiah was quite literal when he said, broad is the way that leads to destruction? Well, guess what? There's a gate in Damascus, I mean, in Jerusalem called the Damascus Gate. It's the widest gate going, looking right up toward Damascus. And broad is the way that leads to destruction. But narrow is the way, the path that leads to life, and fear those that find it. It's a narrow way. So our plumb line isn't the big mega congregations. It never has been and never will be. The Father has sons of light and sons of darkness. And uh, we can be thankful that the head of those sons of light is referred to as the seed of David, the son of man, uh, the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. And the Father established proper kingship through David. So when you look at the Middle East uh, and you see the nations encamped around Israel wanting to devour the promises to David, that ultimately ends in warring against the son of David, which is Messiah. How many of you guys are aware that he's called the son of David? Yeah. All right, next passage here. So how do we get a northern Assyrian beast, also called the lion, even from Syria to Jerusalem, Israel? How do we get it? How does this happen? What's this look like? Here's a brief look at some genealogy, theology, philosophy, etymology, and of course, geography regarding the matter. Earlier, we talked about ruminants. A ruminant is an even-toed, ungulate mammal. How many of you know that the Torah established clean and unclean animals? The cloven-hoofed animals are clean animals, and they're even-toed, ungulate mammals that chew the cud regurgitated from the rumen. And that's what we're compared to. So I'm encouraging you guys to chew the cud today. And the words you're hearing from the prophets and from my words and other people as they share. The ruminants comprise the cattle, the sheep, the antelopes, deer, giraffe, and their relatives. Did you know that in the Testament of the Dead Sea Scrolls, there's a book called the Book of Enoch. And Enoch had a series of dream visions. I would encourage you to get a copy. It was widely circulated in the... Uh, uh, at the time that Messiah was here. It's quoted numerous times in the apostolic writings. It is a wealth of information. Uh, get it and get in it. and uh, uh, It's foundational, honestly, to, to be transparent. Book the book of awesome. And in that, past, in that book, he has a series of animal dream visions, which sets the standard for the later uh, uh, animal sacrificial system in the Torah of Moses. And in that passage, he describes Abraham as a white bull that begets a bull. So the bull, a clean animal, right? A ruminant, begets a bull. And then, but he also begat something else, a wild ass. Did you, you guys know what this is leading to? So Abraham begat who? Isaac, a bull, and Ishmael, the wild ass, which is, he's referred to as a wild ass of a man in the canon. And then, guess what? Isaac has kids. Isaac begets Jacob, which is called a ram, so a sheep. That's why Israel is called sheep in the scriptures, because of what was established by the test of good and faithful testimony of Enoch. So all of Israel were called sheep. So the, Isaac also begat who? Jacob. Ja Isaac begat Jacob and, ja and also Esau. Esau, that's right. And Esau is called a wild boar. See the differentiation between clean and unclean here? So Abraham birthed the bull, clean, and also a wild ass, Ishmael, unclean. And then you've got uh, Isaac birthed and Esau. I mean, Isaac births, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jacob and Esau. Jacob, uh, sheep, clean, split hoof, remnant, what we are supposed to be, sheep, chewing the cud, marinate, letting the word marinate in us and being uh, presenting ourselves before it to wash ourselves in the word 
So, uh, but in that passage, this would be important too as we progress because Muslims believe the line of promise of, that would bring forth the heirs to the throne in Jerusalem came through Ishmael. Wrong. I'll be much later. They twisted the narrative. But uh, that matter was established before the ark in the testimony of Enoch by these dream visions which are uh, which foretell in stunning detail the rise and fall of kingdoms all the way right up to the first temple, second temple, right up to the second, uh, second coming at the end of days. Uh, well worth looking at. So be a contemplative person, a person given to meditation. Don't be a simpleton. The scripture says the wise man sees trouble ahead and prepares. And the simpleton goes headlong into it and, of course, pays the consequences. First, we have the Assyrian. Then the one head, the ruler from Bethlehem. That's the establish this is established by Micah. When you look at the map on the right-hand side, you see the Mediterranean Sea here over to the left, and then that green area, that's Assyria. This is what Isaiah is familiar with. Now shall the daughter of Zion be completely hedged in. Is Zion, Israel, completely hedged in, surrounded on all sides even now? Yes, they are. He has laid siege against us. They shall smite the tribes of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. And thou, Bethlehem, art few in number, to be reckoned among the houses, household of or thousands of Judah. Yet out of thee shall one come forth unto me. So he comes out of them and then brought to the father above, me, to be a ruler of Israel. And his goings forth were, begin, for, for, were from the beginning, even from eternity. Therefore shall he appoint them to wait till the time of her travails. Remember what we just read a minute ago? Of a woman travailing or a birth pains? This will be important for you soon. <laughs> Think it not. Here's what you're going to see. You're going you're to see blood and water. You're gonna, on the first day, the Father divided the light from the darkness. You're going to light up too. Because after all that pain, you're going you're gonna to glow. You're going to see there's going to be light. There's going to be light in that baby's eyes. There's going to be blood. And there's going to be water. And it's going to be in that order. It's going to be, I'm sorry, uh, light, water, and blood. That's what you're going to see. Why? Because that's the sta established order in the beginning. What did we see when Messiah was pierced? His side was pierced and water and blood poured forth. That's day two and day three of creation. On day one, the father divided the light from the darkness, saw the light that it was good. Day two, he divided the waters above. There's water. Waters above from the waters below. Day three... He called forth the dry land and the elements that it takes to make the blood which comes from the water which was birthed out of the word which created the light which preceded it. Isn't that awesome? And we see all that testimony right there when Messiah was pierced who is called the light of the world. You are called the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Don't put your light under a bushel. Woe to those who seek a covering but a covering that is not of my spirit. And that, my friends, is some of the major motivator for religious uh, participation. A covering that is not of his spirit. People want to tuck up underneath a denomination. Tuck up underneath the preacher. Same thing Israel did at the foot of the mountain. No, you go talk to the Father for us, preacher. If we hear him, we might die, and they may have. Because their hearts were wayward. So the Father does not want our denominational covering. He wants our honesty. He doesn't want perfect children. He wants honest children. Be honest with him about Run to him quickly when you sin because he is good and gracious and patient and loving and kind and gentle, not willing that any would suffer, but that all would come to repentance. People will run out of those institutions in droves to hear the things that I'm telling you when, when it costs them something. Right now, there's, things are pretty good here in the United States. People are converting in mass and accepting the testimony of the Messiah in the streets of Iran and in Syria and in the Middle East where it costs something now. And people will have a different view of their faith here. Father will wake this nation up, but as you know, that typically comes in times of leanness. And he says he will send, send leanness among our fat ones. Verse 5, not 4, I'm sorry, Micah 5, 4. Hope you can read it, I know it's small. 
And the Lord shall, we're in Micah 5, in case you want to follow along in your own scriptures if that's too small. And the Lord shall stand and see and feed his flock with power, and they shall dwell in the glory of the name of the Lord their God. For now shall they be magnified to the ends of the earth. And she, Zion, shall have peace. She doesn't have peace before this. She shall have peace when Ashur, the word Assyria, shall come into your land. Assyria to the north. Daniel calls him the willful king of the north. And we're going to look at some of the word study. We're going to do a word study on the word north to give us specific details as to where he comes from and, uh, as uh, we progress through subsequent passages. When he, sh he, the Assyrian, Ashur, shall come upon your country, there shall be raised against him seven shepherds and eight attacks of men, and they shall tend the Assyrian with a sword and the land of Nimrod with the, her trench, and he shall deliver you from the Assyrian, who shall? The ruler from Bethlehem, the one head, the one leader, the pastor on the corner is not your leader, the, the rabbi in the, uh, at the synagogue is not your leader, your leader took a seat at the right hand of the Father. He is your one head. Bradley, you're going to come. Let me finish this passage on verse 5, and then I, I, I see you got uh, something you want to say, and thank you. And they shall tend the Assyrian with a sword in the land of Nimrod with her trench, and he, that is the one ruler, the one head from Bethlehem, will deliver you from the Assyrian when he shall come upon your land, when he shall invade your coasts. We find out that the Assyrian, with an innumerable multitude, uh, a large mass of allies, attacks the Western nations as well. How many of you guys are familiar with the Gog of Magog passages you've read in Ezekiel? Same conflict, same time, same location. We're going to look at that in a second too. Bradley, what you got, brother? I'm uh, just going to add real quick. You're talking about Assyria in English and how in Hebrew it's a shore. Sure, sure. Um, well, that same... Um, I don't know what you call it. It's the same today. Like Syria, yep. you know, Syria is a short version of Assyria, but yep. in Arabic, when they say it, they pronounce it Assyria. Assyria. Basically, still they're calling it Ashur. Ashur. Yep. Yep. Named after their war god, uh, the god Ashur, uh, which is going to be cool in something a presentation we're going to get to. We're establishing scripture foundations uh, now as we as uh, we move forward. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles. Who's, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Do you guys know that? Yeah. So where is the remnant of Jacob at, the at this time? Look what it says. A remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles and the nations in the midst of many peoples as dew falling from the Lord and as lambs on the grass that none may assemble nor resist among the sons of men. They're scattered abroad in the four corners of the earth, it says at the time. Do you know that as a believer in the Messiah, he's the king of Israel. You are grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. We are, uh, we are to boast not against the root. The root supports the branches. So we're brad branches grafted, not a nation state of Talmud and Judaism. That's not what I'm telling. That's not what I'm encouraging. Please make that distinction. You're grafted into the believing remnant of Israel, an olive tree. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many peoples, as dew falling from the Lord and as lambs on the grass, that none may assemble nor resist among the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many nations, scattered abroad, even as a lion in the forest among cattle, and as a lion's whelp among the flocks of sheep. Do you know that Israel has a very fierce army? But folks, the, uh, their arm will be broken. The Father will not allow Israel to trust in their own strength, and they do. I, I'm, being on Twitter, it opens you up to the national dialogue, and to see Israel trusting in their strength of their own arm. And by the way, the nationalist spirit here in, in America, we're not going to get through this without Messiah's help. Okay, He's going to break us and utterly rip us asunder by the kings of the east. East will go west. They already are. You've probably seen the news. I mean, if you're on Facebook and you see the things that I share, you can't get away from it. And that's just going to be the way it is until I die. Uh, because it's important. The, the ships of the east, uh, Russia, China, and Iran, all participating now, right now even, uh, to come west. Uh, uh, and we'll see some headlines about that here in just a few minutes. Look at verse 9. 
Then thine hand shall be lifted up against them that afflict thee, and all thine enemies shall be utterly destroyed. That's what he does to Zion's enemies. Don't want to be numbered among those saying, Come, let us not remember the name of Israel no more. You don't want to be a, a, a separatist calling for the name of Israel to be destroyed. That's not what a father does. The father loves Israel. He calls Israel his son. Tell Pharaoh that Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Any promise that we have as a Christian or a believer in the Messiah comes through the uh, believing remnant of Israel. And their one head, Messiah, the king of Israel. He's not coming back to D.C. He's coming back here to, 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 to the Levant, to Israel. Albeit via a narrow path from the east. First, we have the son of, a, a son of the left hand coming from the north. <coughs> I will utterly destroy the cities of thy land and demolish all thy strongholds. I will utterly destroy, verse 12, thy sorceries out of thy hands, and there shall be no soothsayers in thee. Soothsayers, preachers telling us what our itching ears want to hear. I will utterly destroy the graven images and thy statues out of the midst of thee. And thou shalt never any more worship the work of thine hands. You know, our churches can be an idol. And most of the time are. We stand back and look at the thing we've created. And, oh, wow, look what we've done here. And well, Messiah and all of that discourse was all he could do to get their eyes dislodged from the temple. So he starts right out of the gate. See this thing that, that you're Googling over? Not one stone will be left uncovered. Hey, bud. How are you? Come on. Did you bring your boat? I will utterly destroy thy graven images and the statues out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt never any more worship the work of thine hands. I will cut off the groves out of the midst of thee, and I will abolish thy cities. I will execute vengeance on the heathen in anger and wrath, because they hearken not. <coughs> 